Death. Three important and interesting questions. Where are the people who died? Will we know the moment of our death when it arrives? Can we postpone or advance our death? Or has the time come and the turn, there's nothing to do? Is fatalism a correct doctrine? Introduction. In the first episode of this series we worked on the infinite war between us and this relentless enemy that always wins. In the second we saw the final war waged between this enemy, death, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnate God who conquered death with a perfect life, without the sting, the power of death that is sin over itself. We have also seen that this victory extends to all who believe in Jesus' sacrifice and live their lives redeemed by his blood. Now we will work on these three questions that certainly arise when we talk about the subject. 1. Where are the people who died? This issue is well worked on in the series 1 recorded on the ministry of Jesus Christ in Hades. The World of the Dead, Part 1, 2 and 3. Available at the link here and in the description. However, I will answer it here as well. The scriptures make it clear that the immaterial part of the human being, that is, his soul and spirit, is in an intermediate state awaiting the resurrection of the body. The Bible teaches that when a person dies, he will be taken to the presence of God and will wait until the end of time for the resurrection of the body. Evidence of this doctrine is found in Jesus Christ's promise to the repentant thief on the cross. Luke chapter 23, 43, And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise as well as Paul's teaching that he who leaves the body goes into the direct presence of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8 But we are confident and willing to leave this body and live with the Lord. After this period in this intermediate state, God will resurrect all people, some will be resurrected to eternal life with God and some will be resurrected also in their bodies to face eternal punishment. Revelation chapter 20.6 Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over these the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20 11 to 14 and I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. And death and hell gave up the dead that were in them. And they were judged each according to his works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And any one not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. 2. Will we know the moment of our death when it arrives? Not for most of life. As we worked on the first video in this series, our minds are programmed not to think about this issue. This is even very important for our quality of life. Just imagine living all the time knowing that you will die on such and such a day. It would be awful. However, examining the scriptures we can say that as this crucial moment in our history approaches and, if we are very attentive to God and his designs, we say yes. Yes, we will be able to know the moment of our departure, 
Not exactly the day and hour, at least if we have a sentence scheduled. We analyze the Holy Bible and see the example of some servants of the Eternal, Aaron, Moses and Paul. All of them, when approaching the day that they would die, knew without any surprise that this would happen. Aaron's death, Numbers 20, 23 to 29. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron on Mount Hor, in the borders of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron will be gathered to his people. Because he will not enter the land that I have given to the children of Israel, because ye rebelled against my order at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son and bring them up Mount Hor. And strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son, for Aaron will be gathered, and he will die there. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and they went up to Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there on the top of the mountain, and Moses and Eleazar went down from the mountain. When all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, all the house of Israel mourned for Aaron thirty days. Moses's death, Deuteronomy chapter 32, 48 to 50 and 34. 5. Then the Lord spoke to Moses that same day, saying, Go up to the mountain of Abarim, to Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, opposite Jericho. And see the land of Canaan, which I will give to the children of Israel for a possession. And die on the mountain to which you will go up, and gather yourself to your people. As Aaron your brother died on Mount Hor, and gathered himself to his people. So Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab. According to the word of the Lord. Paul's death. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 6-8. For I am already being offered by sprinkling of sacrifice, and the time of my departure is near. I fought the good fight, I finished my career, I kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness is laid up for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me but also to all who love his coming. The moment will come when our career in this world will end and then there will be nothing left to do but face death and go to meet our Lord. In the face of what the scriptures reveal to us, certainly God will reveal to us when that moment comes, when it is close to this hour. Whether because of old age, a chronic illness or even circumstances of this life, it is enough to be attentive sober and vigilant to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, we must be wise in knowing how to discern the times. If I am sixty years old, I must know that I will not live another sixty. Within normality and the best expectations, I will have around twenty more years of life in this world. With rare exceptions, or if I have an illness unto death, I must discern that my departure is near. Also with rare exceptions where the Lord has some purpose to glorify his name in this illness. A biblical example among many of someone who knew how to discern the times was Jacob. When old, he knew that his death was near. So he took the necessary measures that he should take in relation to the things of this life and about his family. Genesis chapter 49, 28-33. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is what their father spoke to them when he blessed them. Each one of them he blessed according to his blessing. Afterward he commanded them, and said unto them, I gather myself to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is opposite Mamre, in the land of Canaan. Which Abraham bought with that field from Ephron the Hittite for an inheritance of burial. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife, there they buried Isaac and Rebekah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the sons of Heth. 
So when Jacob had made an end of commanding his sons, he tucked his feet into the bed, and expired, and was gathered to his people. 3. Can we postpone or advance our death? Or has the time come in the turn? There's nothing to do? Is fatalism a correct doctrine? The objective answer is yes. We can indeed postpone or hasten our death. But let's work a little harder on this answer. It is evident that God is omniscient, knows all things. Even to our dying day, however, knowing him does not interfere with the actions of his free choice creatures. The Lord does not force them to do anything. This is the case with the sin of Satan, Adam and Eve and even our sins. If God interfered in our actions, the world and life would certainly be very different. What he can do is help us make the right decisions and actions if we ask for it and allow it. If we accept determinism and fatalism, we will be destroying human responsibility, because if everything is predetermined by God, how can we make man responsible for something? Determinism leads man not to make an effort to do good. Since everything is determined, I don't need to make an effort to do good. If you do good, it was because it was already determined. Let's get back to sobriety. Yes, we can postpone or advance our departure from this world, and we have biblical grounds for this. We begin with a key text for understanding this subject, Exodus chapter 20. 12. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God gives you. This text seems to leave no doubt that we can postpone or advance our death. But to avoid any doubts, let's also look at the case of King Hezekiah. This king was sentenced to death by God but by repenting and crying deeply, he had 15 more years of life added. This episode is recorded in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20. 1 to 11. How many people would already be dead if he hadn't embraced the Lord Jesus and changed the course of their lives? They left behind the drugs, the violence, the ungodly life they led. We should rather have a pious and diligent life, such as driving carefully, treating all people with respect, eating well, sleeping well, having a healthy life, trying to avoid or advance diseases such as cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, avoiding excess weight, and so on. Some may challenge this truth with the passages in Matthew chapter 6.27 and Luke chapter 12.25 where Jesus says that we cannot add a cubit to our lifespan. And which of you by all his care can add a cubit to his stature? In this passage the Lord is exhorting us to live a life of trust and not be anxious about the cares of this world. He cannot use it as doctrine in this matter.